Hi there. I wanted to wish everyone a Happy New Year. I know it's been a while since my last video, but things have been kind of busy in my life. I actually had a lot of construction going on in my house, including uh, redoing my entire basement. I've had some issues in the past in my basement with water coming in. I do live in Oregon where it rains a lot. So the basement has now been waterproofed. And then I went ahead and rebuilt my work area, put carpet down, built a room, did a bunch of stuff down here. But because of that, I didn't have any place or any way to work on retro or old computers anymore. So that's why there was a lack of videos. But now I'm all done and I can start making videos again. And it's great because I have a bunch of stuff planned for the near future. But today I wanna to talk about something that I recently picked up on OfferUp here in Portland and I'm really excited about. Let's take a look. And this is it. What's in this box is actually what you see on the outside, a TRS-80 Model 4. I found this on OfferUp for just $80 and it belonged to someone who used to use it for software development apparently. Unfortunately, I didn't get to talk directly to the seller. There was an intermediate party who you know, brought this to me, but I figured $80 for something that was in box was a pretty good deal. I do have no idea if this works and I haven't even taken it out of the box. So we're gonna look at it together and see what happens. So the box is in pretty good shape. Um, if I roll it around here, no got much going on on the side here. And this side, same thing. Unfortunately, this tape damage happened when they brought it to me just the other day. It had packing tape on it that I had to peel off. So that sort of ruined the box a little bit. <laughs> and on this side, uh, it just shows the serial number 8416 and some other stamps contains cat number 261069. Let me go look up exactly which model that is because there are a couple different models of this. And 261069 is the 64K dual floppy version. Uh, if it was 261070, that would be the later uh, Deskmate or the D version of the Model 4. Uh, that had the different floppy drives that you kind of like twisted to close and it was the later version and actually was sold until 1991. Now the 261069 comes in two versions. There's the regular one and then there's an A version. While the And the A version is the gate array model that has a more upgraded, faster motherboard with some more integration going on versus the older PAL based motherboard. And from my understanding, the older one has a white screen, you know, black and white versus a green phosphor on the gate array, plus some other things. So we'll see what's actually in here. So it has a sticker on the top, which is interesting. It's a Radio Shack to Radio Shack shipping sticker. So it looks like it came from Radio Shack store 603 in Woodland, California. And it was sent to a Radio Shack Universal Electric and Video 110 North Everett or Everest. Um, unfortunately, the rest of this is gone, but there's an NE there, and I wonder if that's, I don't know, NEW. So I'm not sure where that is exactly. I'd have to look that up. Maybe that store still exists. That's the only shipping label on the box. Okay, well, let's take a look inside. Uh -huh, let's flip this around. So there it is. Um, it's in the plastic and I can see it has the dust cover on it as well. And some of the foam is intact. Uh, there's a missing piece of foam on that side, but otherwise it's got the foam. I don't know what the original packing material was like if it had maybe a piece of cardboard where the manuals and stuff were. Looks like there's some handles here that I can just lift it. Oh, it's really heavy. Ugh. Yeah, so there we go. Interesting packing. So there's nothing else in the box. It's empty, so let's just get this out of here. Roll this over there. And let's take a look at the computer here. So I guess I'm going to lift it off this cardboard. So here's the TRS-80, it's sitting next to my IBM 5150. So similar age, that's from 1981 and uh, I think the Model 4 came out maybe in 1983, but it smells, um, it's a little musty. 
I think it was stored in someone's attic. Uh, at least it was in the plastic, so hopefully it's not dirty. But let's take this off and take a look inside. Let's get a closer look. So I'm quite pleased. The condition is really nice. Uh, right off the bat, if you can see here, this is a 128K model. It's got the number pad and it has the arrows sort of shifted down. Now what's interesting is the feel of the keyboard is not particularly great. But this is interesting, it has an F123 key. I've never actually seen a Model 4 in person. But being 128K, it means it did have an expansion. And I think they never sold 100, 128K models. You always got a 64K model, and then you took it in and they would do an upgrade and that included this um, new badge. Here's a close up of the 128K badge. This is the reset switch. This computer has some extra labels that have been added at some point to some of these keys. So there's two there, one that says control, and that one says con something, is that control as well? And on this side of the keyboard we have similar stuff here, word, line, paragraph, page. CRT looks pretty good, it's still just slightly dirty, but otherwise it's in decent shape. And here are the two floppy drives. They seem to be working fine. And they're pretty clean inside, I can kind of see inside, I don't really see a lot of filth in there, so that's a good thing. One other thing is that the Gatorade models, which are the more desirable, I think, have the green phosphor, which we can't tell yet because we haven't turned it on, but they also supposedly have the arrow keys in this configuration. The earlier ones had arrow keys here and over here on the other side of the keyboard sort of split, yet up and down on one part and left and right on the other. So I think this might be a Gatorade. You can't know for sure because people might have upgraded mixed and matched parts. I don't know. I think there are also some Gatorade machines that have the green screen, but I went back to the older arrow key layout. One of the nice things about the TRC Model 3s and 4s like this is the back is totally smooth. So if you had this sitting on a desk and someone was there, they didn't see a bunch of ports and slots and stuff like that. Of course, the negative is the connectors I think are all on the bottom. Now I thought I read online that the Gatorade model had a serial port that faced backwards and there's no opening on this case. So I'm not sure if that means it's underneath and it faces this way or what exactly. So we're gonna have to flip this over and take a look at the cat number and take a look at the ports. So turning it on the side here, we get a look at the bottom here. And what I love to see is that this machine appears to be fully loaded and it's got the serial port option. Looking close on the badge under the computer here, looking at the cat number, I had read that the ones with an A was the Gatorade. I don't know if it you know actually was labeled on the sticker like that or not, but anyways, it does match the box as the serial number. But that means that this is not a Gatorade model. And I think the Gatorades don't have separate connectors here. I'm not too sure. We'll know for sure when we open it up. But it's funny that it's got that keyboard that is more like the Gatorade one. And yet the bottom here seems like it's not a Gatorade. We've got a warranty sticker on here that's still not broken. This probably means it was serviced at a Radio Shack. You can see the black sticker under here that was probably the original sticker that has been, you know, kind of peeled off. And it looks like there are two white stickers on here, two warranty stickers. So maybe when the RAM upgrade went in, maybe this thing has had a malfunction. Who knows what happened, but if they did it at the Radio Shack dealer, they would have had, you know, the stickers put back on. We have a sticker that describes how to connect everything when it comes to the ports on the bottom of the machine. So that's kind of handy. These two knobs here are the brightness and the contrast for the CRT. And down here we have the power switch, which incidentally was actually on. So I don't know if someone's tested this or what, but when at least when they unplugged it, it was in the on position. Burn in and proud. I don't quite, is this like Tandy Corporation of America? Burn in and proud. So this is like testing. That stick, this, this stamp is on the box as well. I didn't know what it was. It's harder to read. Now one last thing I need to do before we try turning this on is give it the sniff test. Okay, so good thing I have to report is that this is not a smoker machine. It was not used by a smoker. It smells just a little bit musty, but it has no smoke smell. That's a good thing, because I really don't like that smell. I'm just gonna go for broke, and I'm gonna plug this in and we're gonna see if it turns on. If it pops, it pops. All right, I got a power strip over here. Uh, it should be off now. Let's see what happens when we hit the power switch. All right, we got floppy drive action. Not seeing anything on the CRT. All right, so I have filament. 
So the filament is, the heater is running because I can see the filament. So there's nothing on the screen. Let's check the knobs for the brightness and the contrast. Okay, we got raster. So that's great. And it is a green CRT as we can see from the raster there. And it looks sharp. But we didn't, when I hit the reset button, this, the floppy drive does seek. I don't have, I mean, I don't have a floppy disk to put in here to try. So I don't really know if you boot without a floppy, what happens. But the fact is when I hit reset, it tries to boot again. Well, that's a good sign if you ask me. But how do I break out of this? Um... There we go. I thought so. So it says cassette. Hit enter, memory size. So I think I held down break. So when you boot a Model 4 without a floppy... Uh-oh. We're, we're getting noise. Smoke! Okay, so I bet you... <laughs> they had a little blow there. From the smell of that, that's a capacitor. And I wouldn't be surprised if that's the input capacitor on the AC line. Ooh, that stinks. That smells real bad. Um, those capacitors are little square film ones. I had that happen on my Apple III actually. And it, it, you know, it doesn't cause any damage, it's just on the AC input side. I'll just need to open this up, I'll just remove those capacitors. But you know, inevitably this thing will probably need to be recapped anyhow. But uh, I'm not too worried because it is still was running when it was the smoke was coming out there. So I have a feeling, and judging by the smell, I think that's just the uh, filter cap. Okay, after the smoke was let out, I have it up on the workbench here and we're gonna open this up and take a look at what happened inside. You just put a towel on the side here and you put the machine up on its side like this. And then we take the screws out. All the screws are out. I'm gonna put this back down carefully because it's all loose now. Okay. Let me just lift the top off, being very careful because the CRT neck can hit and we don't want to break that off. Oh yes, there's one screw on the back. There's a screw on the back. Okay, there we go. There was just a little ground cable. It wasn't, it wasn't, I didn't have to disconnect it. All right, so that's how you do it. A little. A little differently, <laughs> a little different than newer computers. All right, I've gone handheld, so I apologize for the shaky cam, but it's the only way I can really get it in. So uh, the keyboard here is sitting on mounts. There's four screws, two there and two here. Uh, it looks like it has a thin membrane type cable that must run to the motherboard. Here are the two floppy drives. So these are just sort of normal uh, PC compatible. Uh, these would work any PC from the old days. I don't know, these might be single-sided uh, double density drives. I think the Model 4s were all double density. Some of them are actually double-sided, so I'll be able to take a look. Actually, no, I can tell right off the bat that these are single-sided drives because that's the cable that goes to the head. And right there, you can see it as well, it's a little dark, but there is only a single head on these drives. So these are single-sided drives, no big deal. You can use PC drives like that are double-sided, they will fit in here as well. So it looks like the power supply on the Model 4 for the floppy drive unit is a combined unit. On the older Model 3s, it's actually a separate unit. Then if you add the floppy drives, you get a second power supply. See this thing right here? This yellow thing? That's, I, that's what burned, and I can see that it's got the signs of the burn right there. So that's the input filter cap, and uh, that makes a real terrible smell. It actually stinks really badly in here. But luckily I have more of these. <laughs> I actually have a bag full of them. So I can easily just swap that out and we're good to go. Looking in here, we have some dates. Someone wrote January 13, 1984. And if we look back here, this says April 1st, 1984. So this computer seems to be from the 84 era. And here's this assembly and proud thing, base and proud, video and proud. Here's the CRT. It runs on 12 volts from the power supply here. So it's fed from these wires here. And that's the CRT module. 
This is a much higher resolution CRT. I could tell from the little time it was working. It's much clearer than the one on the Model 3 and the Model 1, which is more like a television based system. But look how clean it is. It's just, it's unbelievable. I, I can't imagine it has that many hours judging by how clean everything is. I always laugh at this. Radio Shack puts masking tape on here to hold the uh, little nuts on so they don't fall off. It's and then back here in this metal cage is where the motherboard is. I'd have to take this all apart to kind of see what's going on, but I mean, I'm judging by the fact that this has the arrow keys, it's 1984, and it has the green CRT. This must be the Gatorade model, right? I think some experts for the TRS-80 can probably give me some hints here and let me know. But yeah, it's got it, right? Oh, this looks a little bent here. See this? That's kind of crazy. Oh, this has like a bend on it. It's like, of course, it's bending the motherboard that's in there as well. So that's kind of sucky. I wonder how that happened. Like some kind of damage at some point. Yeah, so I'll have to take this apart to know for sure, like which motherboard's in here. It'd be really cool if this had the high resolution graphics adapter as well. Well, there we go. There's my new TRS-80 Model 4. The fact that it worked and I saw that cassette prompt and it was running in Model 3 Basic gives me hope that this thing is gonna work perfectly. I'm really excited. I can't believe I found this thing for only 80 bucks and it's in such great condition. In the next video, I'll do some repairs. We'll take it apart further, take a look at the motherboard. I'll have some discs uh, that I can try on here and we can kind of see what this thing's all about. Thanks for watching. Put your comments and your questions in the comment section below. And yeah, I'm back, so more videos will be coming soon. Thanks. Bye.